Welcome back to Beacon in the Storm. I'm your host, Dr. Bradford Carlton, and today we are talking about the fact that marriage is failing men. And I'm not talking about nagging wives. I'm not talking about, you know, impetuant children. I'm talking about the institution of marriage, this idea that a man is supposed to marry a woman and then they're happy and lovey-dovey forever until, you know, good health and all that, right? Like, until they die. So let's, let's start with some facts. Did you know that marriage rates have been falling? And they've been falling for a rather long time now. It's actually the number of marriages every year is dramatically lower than it was five years ago, and even lower, that's, that was dramatically lower than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. The rate of marriage is just plummeting, all right? And so, but we still kind of push men into this idea that they have to get married. They have to be the provider. That is the stereotypical male, the one who is able to take care of things, take care of the ones he loves. And marriage is the institution in order to you know, sanctify that relationship that he's developed with someone. Because, you know, if he's going out there and, and not getting married, but he's just playing the field, he's a player, there, there's kind of a social stigma against that. And I know a lot of kind of manosphere and red pill content tells men that that's what they should be doing. You know, they, they say, screw the women. Who cares about them and their feelings? It's your life. Figure out how to make yourself happy and just go out and spread your seed, essentially. And, like, if you talk to these guys later in life, most of them, and I have met up plenty of them, okay? I've met plenty of these guys who did the, played the game thing for decades and then got old. And what happens is they wish they had settled down, all right? Because they had to experience all kinds of STDs. They had to experience all kinds of crazies. They got into all kinds of weird situations that they wished they hadn't. And it was just for cheap and easy sex, all right? Whereas you have on the other side this idealized version of marriage where a man and a woman come together and they fall madly in love and they decide that they're going to spend the rest of their lives together and they have children and his job is to go work, although nowadays it's a little tougher because, you know, with two income households barely able to pay the rent, it's tougher to have this idealized version. But he's supposed to go off and get the job and take care of the family and come home and spend time with the kids before going to sleep and waking up and doing it all over again. All right, and then he does that every day and basically until he dies. And so, like, honestly, neither of them sounds attractive if you think about it. Like, the one is you, you don't have any ties or relationships and you just kind of have this hedonistic lifestyle that will eventually come back on you. Or you have this lifestyle that you're kind of pressured into going with because it's what you're supposed to do. And then you're just kind of supposed to live the same day over and over and over and over again until you die. And maybe you might get to retire, although most men don't get to enjoy retirement because that's what the statistics show. Okay, <clears throat> so marriage rates are way down, which means that either more men are kind of going this hedonistic lifestyle or they're just not able to find a partner, which is actually what the numbers are showing. Numbers show that something like uh, 30 plus percent of people 23 years old right now have not had sex, all right? And like the numbers were drastically different 10 years ago, 20 years ago. But it used to be that the average age that an individual would have sex was about 15 years old. And then by age 18, it was something like 80% of people had had sex. And by 23, 95%. But now it's like 35 or 30 some percent of 23 year olds have not had sex, which means these people have no idea what they're doing when it comes to relationships, all right? It's, and it's not that they don't want them. I've met plenty of people at that age range. They want the relationship. These guys want to go out there. They want to find a partner. They believe they would be a good partner. They want to be a provider. They want to have that idealized version where they find their single person and ride off into the sunset. But for some reason, they're not getting it. Now, if you go and you ask the feminists, hey, what's going on? Why are guys not able to have, find these relationships? Why are they so many of them virgins? you're going to get told, oh, well, these guys are just expectant. They expect women to just fall down in their laps and have their way with them, and that way they could be big old manly. Like, oh, oh, hold up. 
I think there's some sort of um, prejudicial thinking going on against men if people believe that's what most men in that situation believe. Because that completely discounts that these men are actual humans with emotions who have you know, fears, who have joys, who want things, who desire things, who feel bad when bad things happen to them, or they get put down and they don't know how to cope because society is not necessarily taking care of our boys. All the numbers in school show society could care less about boys. And so they're just kind of ended up at the end of the, the school year and as an at end of all of schooling, clueless about what they're supposed to do with their life, what they're supposed to do with interpersonal relationships. And this isn't everybody, but it's a huge part of society. And so what we're just going to chew them out and tell them they're losers, and which is it seems to be kind of the largely the feminist angle. I'm not saying all feminists, all right? Some are kind of receptive, but by and large, it's, it comes back on the men, all right? Here's this idea that men really just need to take care of themselves. They need to buck up, man up, and fix themselves again, showing up. Whereas women are included in that 30-some percent of 23-year-olds who aren't having sex, all right? And I come across plenty of them online as well, plenty of women saying, hey, I'm like 24 years old. I've never been with a man. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It's not that I'm not good looking. I just don't know how to engage, all right? So marriage rates are down. That was that whole long thing was to get to say marriage rates are down. All right. Now, my point originally, right, to start the, the topic of the show is marriage is failing men. Say that a guy does get married. All right. Well, he's he's not looking at good odds to begin with because 50 percent of marriages end in divorce. All right. And if he's talking second, third, fourth marriages, it's even higher rates. All right. Like fourth marriages and like 68 percent of them end in divorce, which uh, you would think like. Most likely, they, they've gone through three already. It's, it's probably a problem. It might be them. Okay, but half of marriages end in divorce. Marriage rates are already down. And it's not even men who are initiating most of the divorces. Like this, this statistic, I actually had to go look up when somebody told me, that, like, That's, this can't be right. 70 to 80% of all divorces are initiated by women. Think of that. Half of marriages end in divorce. 70 to 80% of those divorces are initiated by women. And oftentimes those women will get alimony because by and large, the court system favors or tends to favor the, the woman in a split. All right. The man often will have to pay either child support or alimony in order to help make her whole almost regardless of facts. This is a tough one. Like, if, if you have not really gotten to know what's going on in the divorce world, especially on the men's side, if you are just got the blinders on, focusing on women, and oh, how the most likely she got abused, most likely not, most likely the man was abused, most likely that she gave up a career in order to raise children, that's debatable nowadays. Like It seems to be, but it's not all women. It's, it's roughly about half of women, maybe. But... Oftentimes, the man may be the one who's got the full-time, they may both have full-time jobs, and they might get split custody, and she might still get child support. It's, it's actually nuts out there what's happening to men. This, it's, it's rough for men when we talk about marriage, because the ideal man is supposed to get married. That's like, you talk to Christians and you know, conservatives, what is their idea of a man well, he's a provider for his wife and children. That's their idea. Okay, well, shoot, what's he supposed to do? If he follows the script and he's the white knight and he sweeps a, a damsel off her feet and they go get married and they pop out a couple children and then she decides that you know he's spending too many hours at work, he's not looking at her the same way that she used to. She, well, when she goes shopping, she's met this nice guy who checks her out, um, I mean, beeping the groceries check out, not the other way. And they get stripe a conversation and they decide to have coffee and, and then, oh no, now they're dating. And oh no, she files for divorce because her husband's not providing enough for her. And like, this is a common story. And what did the guy do wrong? Like, there, there's this belief that men are the ones who abuse women more. 
but the statistics do not show that. In fact, the statistics show that women abuse pretty much everybody else more. Whether it's a heterosexual couple, 70% of non-reciprocal domestic violence is caused by the woman. If it's a lesbian couple, lesbian couples have the highest incidence of domestic violence. Like, think of that. Women are more likely to hit everybody. So he's more likely to have been abused, to have been nagged at while he's doing his job. She doesn't feel that she's getting out of the relationship what she wants, and she's expecting him to do something about it, because this is kind of how it goes. He's not a mind reader, so she starts wandering off, finds somebody new. She ends the relationship, blames him for it, and she gets paid at the end of the day. So, like, this is, that's not, if people had better morals, if they had better values, if they were, had better communication skills at the very least, we would be able to work together and marriage might actually be better because two household incomes are generally better off than one household incomes. Having two parents in the household is always a better situation for the children. It's actually always better for the mental health of the individuals as well. Marriage is a good institution, but marriage is failing men because it is set up in such a way where they have so much of the burden that they have to shoulder. I'm not even talking about the emotional burden. Like, there's, there's, um, oh, shoot, I think that the phrase is emotional burden um, that women and feminists will use when discussing their man, all right? They say that the man is, is putting too much emotional burden on her, meaning he's sharing his feelings, all right? And guys aren't supposed to do that. And so there's this whole dialogue in feminist critique about how little men are supposed to share their feelings with women because we, we don't, we as men shouldn't be burdening our women with that. Women do that all the time. I'm not saying all women, but at least every single one I've ever interacted with are constantly putting their emotional burdens on me and expecting me to sit there and go, oh my gosh, oh, that's so terrible. Oh, is there anything I can do to help? Oh no, you just need a shoulder to cry on, okay. Like, but as soon as the guy does it, oh, emotional burden. Nah, can't, can't deal with that. Shouldn't be, shouldn't have to deal with that. He should have to figure these things out himself, but they ignore the flip side. It's wrong how we treat men in relationships. It's wrong how we treat men in marriage. And if we could ground ourselves in a spiritual or religious foundation of what it's supposed to be, then we could have a better better kind of situation for men overall. So that's what I'm going to leave you at. Keep looking for the light in the tempest. God will show you the way.